we are in what the economist Jeremy Rifkin calls the third industrial revolution. And by that, and this applies to Lucy's work and a lot of the other work I'm going to talk about, is that the first industrial revolution happened in the 19th century when we mechanized work, right, and did things like whatever they did in that building next door. We took things we used to do by hand and we mechanized it. We made machines, right? That was the 19th century. In the early 20th century, Henry Ford came along and invented the assembly line. And so the second industrial revolution of the last century was about mass production and mass consumption, right? And actually design really flourished in the 20th century because of that, because companies needed you know, advertising you know, to sort of sell this mass production. We actually were able to produce far more than people needed, and so we had to convince people to buy more, right? Uh, now, we know, we know the downside of that. It takes a lot of energy. It's tough on the environment. Um, it leads to all sorts of other problems. And so economists are realizing that the 20th century uh, economy, that second industrial revolution, is actually coming to the end, if not having ended already. And we're in this third industrial revolution, which is defined by not mass production and mass consumption, but mass customization. And that idea of mass customization is profoundly disruptive, and it will change everything. These design disciplines, the 20th century way of thinking about them is it's all about turf protection, right? You know, I'm a graphic designer, you don't get to do that, or I'm an architect, I'm licensed, stay away. I mean, that is so behind the where the world is right now that whenever I hear that, I say, come on, we're in the next century. Let's get on with it. I mean, the characteristic of this century is those boundaries do not matter at all. In fact, the value created are the people who can cross them as fast as possible. Because one of the other characteristics of the third industrial revolution is it doesn't care about hierarchies. It could care less about your title and your turf or even, frankly, your license. It all it cares about is who can innovate faster. And so the, the new model of the reality is really a web. It's a network. And now we define reality that way. I mean, we used to think of the brain as a big computer. Now we think of it as a neural network. We used to think of society as hierarchical. Now it's a social network. So networks are the way the world is reorganizing itself. Power in this web-like world comes from who has the greatest number of connections. So being a node is really where your uh, uh, influence lies. And uh, making as many new kinds of connections as creatively as possible is where value gets created. What we're finding ourselves having to do is helping people visualize the invisible, the relationships, the flows, the connections or the disconnections that exist in systems and in organizations. And that is my argument. That is, there is so much work to be done. Because literally, in my last book was really about how systems fail. And I mean, you know, I, make, I sort of show why our economy collapsed in 2008. We could have predicted that. There are certain patterns of failure in systems that you can see when it's going to go. And that pattern existed in their economy for several years before it failed. And I make the argument that this is another role for designers, is we're pattern recognizers. And once we recognize the patterns, we uh, can, in some ways, predict when things are going to happen. And uh, this, too, is a powerful area of service that nobody thinks of hiring a designer for, but is maybe one of the most important things that we can do.